A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Thursday edition of the show. I'm Yemi Adibayo. Always a delight to have you join us to talk sports in London. I must stay in Okonakman. All right. Uh, today, of course, uh, the Super Falcons will uh, be in our minds as they take to the field uh, against uh, Botswana. We'll see uh, what happens in that game. We'll give you a blow-by-blow -blow account. If anything happens, no matter what we're talking about, we'll revert to that game as it is currently going on. Tonight, we'll be talking about the National Sports Festival, uh, the preparation for uh, the National Sports Festival. We will also be talking about handball on the show. We will uh, concentrate on the Grand Slam currently going on. On, uh, not too pleasant news about Rafael Nadal. Let me uh, not let it cut out of the bag just yet. We'll talk about that even as we move on. We know the ladies that will play in the women's singles final. We'll talk about that as uh, we move on. Then, of course, we'll talk about football signings. Andreas Christensen, uh, the new Barcelona player, uh, is in the news. What is he saying? Uh, you need to sit back and relax to hear what Andreas Christensen has to say about his new club, Barcelona. Then, of course, we'll also give you a slice of Formula One. Usually, we don't uh, go that route, but tonight, we're going to be talking about Formula One. And, of course, we're talking about a champion, Max Verstappen uh, of Red Bull. He has a thing or two to say. So that's the outlook of the show. Again, uh, of course, uh, I'd just like to say trust us to revert to what's going on in Morocco. At any point, there's something to talk about. All right, so Austin, that's the outlook of uh, the show. At some point, I uh, expect uh, our guest to join in. But before he does, let's just go on uh, with the show. Uh, let me allow you to start off uh, with the National Sports Festival as Delta State begin to let us know they're very ready. That's right. And, and the fact that they're doing that makes us look forward to the National Sports Festival. I like the fact that states are beginning to take this seriously because you know what we suffered right after ECO 2012, the National Sports Festival struggled to come back. Then we had an abridged version in Abuja just to bring it back. Right after that abridged version in 2018, we're looking forward to a 2020 COVID-19 said no. Um, somehow that, that festival happened and Edo did a pretty good job, you know, brought some accountability, showed us the power of sports in uniting us as a nation and then passed on the baton to their brothers at um, Delta State. So Delta State getting ready for the National Sports Festival. Today they did the unveiling of the logo and the mascots. There your picture is the governor of Delta State, His Excellency, uh, Dr. Ifan Okoa, with the Honorable Minister of Youth and Sports Development, uh, Mr. Sunday Dari, at that um, unveiling that was done in Asaba, the Delta State capital. Let's go to Asaba, get some talking points. It's all about the 21st edition of the National Sports Festival. Demise the movement. We are already updating our facilities and putting in place new ones of international standard because of the multidimensional nature of the festival. Please be assured that the security of athletes and officials is a top priority as we urge intending participants to feel very free to serve all our hospitality. We are not unmindful of the threats being posed by our sister states, Edo, and possibly by ESA. That if we could do what we had done in the past outside our states, they should be rest assured that while at home, We obviously we confirm our superiority in all sporting events. We recall that when Delta won the hosting right, we were all pleased knowing Delta's track record. We know that Delta not only has the athletes, but also has the resources, also has the human capacity, but also has a government who is unafraid to break new grants and lift the bar higher. Delta State will be hosting what we refer to at the ministry as the Nigerian Olympics. 
and if you let me stretch it further, that would be the Africa version of the Olympics because no other country, just by the sheer number of our citizens, no other country can pull together that amount of sports enthusiasts for two weeks. So that's it. The, the Minister uh, for Youth and Sports, of and Sports Development, Mr. Sunday Dari. I mean, I love the theme of this national sports festival that, that Delta will be hosting, uh, uniting the nation, inspiring dreams. I love it. Yeah, I do as well. Um, I mean, the governor just trying to let us know uh, if we can contribute so well when we are not hosting. Imagine what we will do when they were mm -hmm. the ones hosting. They've always taken this seriously. Uh, also, like the sports minister said, it's our own mini Olympics, and a lot of seriousness should be attached to it. And uh, that's why I, for one, uh, I, I like the seriousness with which the sports ministry uh, handles um, the organization of uh, the National Sports Festival. There are still a lot of things left to be desired, but I, I, I think I, I still like the, the past two editions, you know, the, the effort, the drive to ensure that it is done, it is not postponed, you know. Yeah. We, we remember the nightmarish experience we had uh, after 2012. It took us a while before we were able. It took concerted efforts from the previous uh, minister to ensure that at least something was done, which was a bedrock for the other, you know, uh, editions uh, that, that will come. Uh, of course, I don't, and this one uh, that will be hosted. So I have no worries about what Delta State brings to the table in terms of yeah. organizing the event and in terms of competing uh, in the event. And look, if you're getting assurances from the highest level, then you can go to sleep. If mm -hmm. the governor of a state like Delta is telling you, look, we're ready, everything is in tip-top shape, and just trust us, I mean, you should just go to sleep. Already calling, you know, states that they think might even be a problem. And he's saying, look, it's it's not going to be a problem. Before Edo 2020, they said they were going there to dominate. We know what Delta State has been doing in terms of talent, discovery, and development. Now they have an opportunity to show other states what it means. And yeah, me, let's point it out that this is a veritable platform for talent, discovery, and development in Nigeria. That's why when it wasn't happening after ECO 2012, a lot of us were worried because, you know, back in the day, if you do well at the Nuga Games or you're doing well at tertiary games, you are looking forward to the National Sports Festival. Back in the day, coaches go there to see what they can get, you know, in terms of talent. In fact, coaches also use it to, to get ready. So uh, it's beyond just going there to compete. It's holistic. And the ministry, the State Sports Council, stakeholders of sports in Nigeria should take a look at this National Sports Festival I think about ways that we can gain more from it than, than what we're doing now. So I love it. Uh, uniting Nigeria, inspiring new dreams. That should guide us that and let us know that with sports, we can transform lives. Yes, we can. All right, Austin, let's um, uh, switch gears now and talk some handball uh, on the show tonight. Uh, that's also one federation that uh, get, gets positive reviews from us uh, with their activities. A media party was held uh, recently uh, to uh, talk about uh, preparations for uh, the national team ahead of the Africa, uh, Africa Men Handball Championship that will be held uh, yep. in Egypt uh, in two days. Time. As a matter of fact, it starts uh, July 9. Of course, the Federation is saying, look, we, we're prepared with, uh, we, we are pleased, rather, with the preparation mm. of uh, the team. Uh, they're saying, look, we, we're not going there to just make up the numbers. Uh, we're going to go there and uh, do our best. Uh, of course, this Nations Cup also serve as uh, a qualifier. qualifier for the major one. That's uh, uh, the global yeah. edition of the tournament that's going to be the 2023 world handball uh, championship so let's take some reactions from that media party we'll come back to digest what we've heard and also take a look at uh, what to expect when the tournament starts in two days time um and the goal for us is to keep is to make handball a household name in nigeria uh we have the dream to be one of the best in africa and possibly the world 
uh, and our major goal is to ensure that we reach the grassroots with handball here in Nigeria. And the major reason why we're here is specifically for the Egypt 2022 Championship, that's the African Cup of Nations. We're looking forward to it. Uh, we are doing our best to ensure that um, we pick one of the tickets for the World Cup at uh, this championship and we are doing everything we can to keep the players as motivated for this championship and to ensure that uh, nothing goes wrong. Uh, our dream is to make sure that we come back with um, a ticket in hand for the World Championship. Uh, the team has been in camp for four weeks now. I joined them about 12 days ago because I don't stay here. I joined them from my base in France and I've been working for the past 12 days to put something in place. So far, we had the three friendly matches against the local teams, the selected local teams, and things are putting in place a little bit, a bit little by little. But what I can assure about that is, uh, sure, we do all we can. I don't know if we're going to qualify or not, but we do all we can to get out of the group. Oh, sorry, I'm qualifying there for the World Cup. We have five slots. We are not lucky to be in easy, an easy group, but we do all we can, and I think the team is ready. So, Nigeria can count on us, we fight. We fight for Nigeria to the end. Well, the final phase now, we're living virtually in three days, so we finally finished everything. Uh, now we're working on our opponents, now the two opponents are going to play in the first phase, the Cap Verde and the Tunisians. Uh, watch a little bit of the map with the coaches today, tomorrow we'll work with the players on it and see how we can go to at least counter the Physically, I'm obvious, mentally, I can guarantee that because uh, there are little, little problems they have, but I'm not physically well in shape. Uh, now it depends on how the federation handles the um, financial part. I, you know, it all boils boils back to money. If there's no money, uh, I can see what I want to see. The player not listen to me. But physically, the team is, is in shape. All right, as we listen to the president, Samuel Lecheo, and coach Rafi uh, Salami, he talks about, look, we want to pick one of the tickets. The, the Golden Arrows are in Group C. They're up against Cape Verde and uh, Tunisia. And I like the fact that they're trying to watch clips uh, of their opponent. That's very, very important. You have to know the enemy that's in front of you. Well, not enemy, since the sports, the opponent uh, in front of you. And... Uh, I'm, I'm really happy to, to hear that um, they're ambitious. Uh, picking uh, one of the tickets will be very, very uh, important. But then again, we have to start with the African Handball Championship. Let's see how far we're, we're able to go. And uh, what happens in a group phase, well, first phase, that's a group phase, will give us an inkling of whether or not these guys can go all the way. That's right. Uh, you know, I remember when... Samuel Ocheo and his team came on board in 2017. They said, look, for competitions, the objective isn't to win. It's just to ensure that we have a right, the right team to go for competitions and, of course, learn from it. So I think I've been to two editions of the, of the Nations Cup. Didn't do so well, but there's been experience in the bag. Now, let me see the contrasting statement. The president said, our objective is to go pick a ticket for the World Championships. Coach said, wait a minute. It's going to be tough. We're not sure, but we're going to try, you know. But, but you know, they're expressing optimism, and that's mm -hmm. what is needed at this time. Uh, we can't fall to chill and some of the good things his board has done for, for handball development in Nigeria. It will be time for them to start, you know, having some laurels to back it up. It's going to be very tough because we know what some countries are doing in Africa as regards handball, particularly Egypt, the host. So it's going to be very tough. Even Cape Verde is no pushover. There's also Tunisia in that group with Nigeria. So uh, it's, it's one that they must be ready beyond their skills. They mentally they should also be ready to go out there and compete. So let's switch them all the best. But at that parley, Ocheo made a very honest and humble appeal. He called on corporate organizations, persons that can support the development of the sport. That look, if we, if we can be doing the little that we've done with little or no support, then we can do more when we get support. And, and I think he has every right to do that because uh, we need a business environment. And I also think you should remind the ministry we said this is what we're going to do. We know there are some sports in Nigeria that they never get to do anything until there's competitions. But for Ocheo, and to an extent, Frank Orby with badminton until they allow their own crisis to pull them down. And uh, Musa Nimrod with volleyball in his own way, uh, Boye, uh, Boye in there of squash doing his own thing. The ministry should 
wrestling, Daniel Ligali, I mean, those sports that you don't even expect them to, to do what they are doing, and they are doing so much. We support them, get private individuals to come into the, the sport, and then give them the right support that they can get to, you know, do more. Yeah, I agree with you. And I, I remember what uh, Daniel Ligali said here a lot of time. We, we, we scream to high heavens and say we love sports. And the, the private sector mm. needs to show us. You've listed a lot of federations where you, 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 when you want to talk about I I integrity, you want to talk about accountability, accountability. they've shown us that, look, we're credible, uh, we're open, right. and everything we do. So those kind of guys, uh, the private up. sector can partner mm -hmm. with. I, I, wasn't at, I was at an event, I, I won't reveal too much. A former Super Eagles uh, player was talking to a, a detergent brand that they were having a conversation i overheard and they said why are you going to partnership with uh, foreign football clubs don't, don't we have clubs yeah. here you can sponsor don't we have clubs here you can do one or two things for after all you make a lot of money from uh, the nigerian market right. I, I was impressed to see a super eagle player think that way mm -hmm. I, I was impressed and mm -hmm. it, it just goes to show that look we should start when we talk about government on one hand, we should also talk about uh, the private sector. We, we put a lot of money to, you know, the, you know, for, for, for lack of better example, uh, English Premier League and all those other things. If we want to see sports develop, we, we need to concentrate, especially with the federations that have shown us that they are credible. I mean, put the money there, support them. I mean, it's a project. We see how they do it in the United Kingdom, where, where you're based, where they pick somebody from eight, nine, ten, at, an eight-year yeah. plan, at the end of which they expect that that person should be yeah. in medal range at the Olympics. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, it, 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 that's what I was saying. They pick a young talent. All they need to do is put the young talent in the environment that it needs to thrive. And then they say, in five years, mm -hmm. we're going to achieve this, this, and this with this talent. And then they achieve that. They say, let's put another five years. Yeah. And then they achieve it. And you find out at the end of the day, when we say it's 360 degrees branding, that child is going through a proper school system and structure where football and education are going hand in hand. And then he's got parents also who understand that this guy is growing up to be a national treasure, you know? So when we put all of these things together, we'll start getting this result, but it takes responsible leadership. If there's no responsible leadership, you know I mean, are you going to put your money into where you know that someone can come up tomorrow, not transparent, not accountable, and then you start asking questions and nobody can answer you? That's true. Those are the issues. And that's why we've mentioned the ones everyone can attest to. We're, we're not trying yeah. to direct mm -hmm. traffic to those people for personal reasons. No. I mean, some of those guys don't even have our numbers. They, they just know we talk about them. But in the interest of developing sports in Nigeria, if you're really serious, right. if you want to put your money right. where your mouth is, those federations we've mentioned, we've seen what they've mm. tried to do for Nigeria. They deserve all the support uh, they can get. All right, so uh, that's it. We, we've done our we've done our, our part to, uh, of course, <laughs> educate and inform, uh, possibly occasionally yeah. also entertain. But we, we've done our part to if, give uh, the public the information they need to know. All right, also let's uh, address the elephant in it's the room. If, yes, exactly. If, whatever we are saying, that's where our mind is tonight. So let's just go to Morocco and give a situation yeah. report. I hope a shocker is not on the cards. A situation report of what's going on in Group C. A match has already been played. That did involve Nigeria, but the one that involved Nigeria is what you have on your screen. I didn't want to see this, but that's what it is. The game is not over. Um, I think still, still first to have over 20 minutes uh, played. But that first game, Bayana Bayana cruising, cruising. Uh, yeah. Of course, uh, they have taken full control of Group C now. They have That's six points, defeated Burundi 3-1. Botswana and the Super Falcons of Nigeria yeah. currently slugging it out. Is live situation yeah. report from Morocco, Austin. It's goalless. It's goalless. I mean, 21 minutes gone at the moment. Um, the, the goalkeeper from Botswana, he she went down uh, receiving treatment. And, and the Super Falcons, they say, look, this is, you're killing time. But, but that's what it is. They will try their best to, you know, frustrate the Super Falcons as much as they can. But 
in a game of this magnitude, knowing the way the Super Falcons started in losing to South Africa, you would expect that after 22 minutes, they should be at least two goals up. But Chelsea football is changing. And with the way Botswana played in their first game, I said it that it's not going to be easy. They're not going to respect the Super Falcons, but I still expect the Super Falcons to go on to win this one. But it's going to be very tricky. They need to show dominance. They need to show mental strength, pick themselves back up from that first loss. I know it was disappointing pointing but yeah me you know what it is this is women's football in africa after 22 minutes you don't see botswana zero nigeria zero no not at all not at all um i hope yeah okay yeah no, yeah they've yeah. answered us um <laughs> I, I, I think we can go on break with that, with our hearts filled with joy nigeria is a goal up austin good to see that's right good one for uh the super falcons uh, with that goal, Ify Oyechi with the goal for Nigeria. Uh, so let's use that to go on a quick break. When we'll come back, we're going to have more updates for you uh, coming from the 2022 AFCON. Welcome back, Sports Tonight on Channels Television. We're talking about the 2022 Women's Africa Cup of Nations taking place in Rabat, Morocco. Nigeria won Botswana 0. It was Ifoma Onumonu with the goal for the Super Falcons. I mean, that's our fourth goal for Nigeria. And who? Well, it came as a relief. There wasn't it. It was, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a relief. You see, at, at this point, we, we like to face reality. We don't care how you win. At this point, just win. Live to fight another day. Allow the South Africans to enjoy the moment. We are not ready for them yet. Let them, I mean, I, I mean, we're reading all kinds of stories on Twitter, everywhere. Well, I, I'll tell them to enjoy the moment, but not enjoy it too much. You never can tell what can happen. Uh, but it, it, it's good we're winning. And... If we can get this win, wrap it up, then yeah. it, it will ease the pressure. Whatever happens, I expect the Super Falcons to qualify. I mean, it's a 12-team tournament. You're going to have two best losers join the top two in each group. I, I mean, it, it wouldn't and shouldn't get to the point that we wouldn't be able to qualify. I, I, I did not count face, that, well, it's a different ball game entirely, but I do expect us to qualify. From this game, I expect more goals. Expect more goals because, of course, that will relieve the pressure. And so, uh, we're, I'm, I'm hoping so, that this. So, yeah, I mean, the, I'm, yeah, I'm just smiling because it's funny how football humbles you, football fans. You know, because now you say that you know, Kiele, they just go to win. This is the super focus of Nigeria, respected in Africa. But after that game against South Africa, I see that a lot of persons got their hopes dashed. Yeah, it's reality check. You take what you have. That's the situation we find ourselves. You know, look, we'll, we'll talk about the other issues later. You, know, you understand? Look, it, it doesn't matter. Look, that was the time uh, Usain Bolt, we beat everybody. I mean, the heads and shoulders. But that was a time he was just scraping through. But at the end of the day, nobody's mm -hmm. going to say that. At every important race, he won. That's all that matters. South Africa has beaten us. Will it count? It will only count for much if they beat us when it matters. Group face, to me, mm. it doesn't matter. So, but it, it's reality check. You know, you stand in front of the mirror, you take a look at yourself, you see where you are. I mean, um, I, was, I, was, I told you I was cautiously optimistic. You said you were not. You were very... I was cautiously optimistic because of all, all the mm. things that, you know, surrounded the team. And, and somebody I respect posted on Twitter immediately uh, after uh, we lost and said... It's not that the Super Falcons were that bad. We should realize that other teams are getting better. And that's a reality. Other teams are getting better. Uh, but the days you beat people 9-0, it's, 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 it's far gone. It's far gone. I don't expect us, if we do, I'll be happy. But I don't think we're going to beat anybody 9-0-7. I don't think so. If we do, I'm going to be happy. I, I, I'll be the first person to cheat about it if we do. But I don't think it's going to happen. Well, but... I agree with you when you said that it, it's important you win when it matters. But it's also good you win your first game at a competition. It's sure. good for momentum. It's good sure. for media mentions. It's good, it's good to, you know, boost your confidence. You make you guys understand what it means to, you know, start well as a team, you know. So uh, what I'm, I'm seeing this game against Botswana, you could tell that they're still being a bit careful. I'm sure they had, you know, some of the mistakes they made against South Africa on their mind. Uh, so mentally, that's why I said they need to be strong. Uh, could run, run the wardrobe 
now understands that he cannot experiment at this stage of the competition because you just need to go on to beat Botswana and Burundi to advance. If you don't do that, then get ready for the shock of your life. We, we, you, you know how difficult it was for both of us to agree to what a former player was asking me, that the, the Super Eagles will not be at the World Cup. That is, can we think about same for Super Football? And I said, no way, reset. Pause and start again. That can't happen. That the Super Four comes, we will not be at the World Cup. No, it's impossible. So I'm sure the girls understand this mission. Coach Randy Wardrum also wants the best for this team. The NFF, they cannot afford any other form of failure as regards football in Nigeria. The other eight great teams are doing so well. So it's just up for, to the Super Four comes. So, you know, show the quality that they have. No pressure of guys, no pressure, but let them just show the quality that they have and, you know, dominate this competition. All right. So, um, like I said, I hope that we keep disrupting this uh, program with news from Rabat, uh, news about goals and goals and goals and goals. At this point, we have to move on, but trust us, we will revert if there's anything to let you know about Situation Report, Nigeria's yeah. Super Falcons lead by a mm. goal against Botswana, it, and it looks we might have our first three points in the back, but I just have to be cautious to let you know we're still in the first half. Anything can still happen. All right, last thing before uh, we go uh, on a break, let's switch to uh, football now. We, we are waiting stories from Morocco. If he comes, we'll take it. Uh, but Andreas Christensen, former Chelsea defender, joins Barcelona, and a lot of people are looking, I mean, what can he offer? Mm, he's a professional footballer, and Barcelona definitely know why uh, they're signing uh, the defender. So, um, look, this is the period where teams are looking at ways that they can get better. You know what Barcelona struggled with last season. Why I like that they're looking at their defenses because they've got a solid base of young players that the belief can pick up when the new season gets underway. And, and Christensen is, is very, very decent. You know, I like this style of play. I love the fact that even when he's going forward as a defender, he's conscious about what's going on at the back. So I think it's a good signing for, for Barcelona. Comes with a lot of experience and he's got, you know, some good heights. And it's Barcelona. I mean, the player, anybody that is going to Barcelona, what it does to you is that it pumps you up times two you know, whatever quality you're taking to uh, to camp now. So uh, for me, this is a good sign, and let's wait to see what he can he can give to the Catalans. All right. Uh, some people are already saying uh, it's probably a long-term replacement for Gerard Piquet. We'll see. And uh, Piquet is not telling us he's retiring anyway. Almost so. in that mode. Always, almost in that mode. So, yeah, they can be right. Okay. All right. Let's uh, listen to um, uh, the new man, and um, we'll come back for more on Sports Tonight. Since I was eight years old, um, I put something in the paper, uh, my dreams, uh, and that was to become a, a professional football player and play for Barcelona. So um, it's a proud day, and uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to, to get started. Obviously, I have to get better, learn every day, but um, I think my, my style of play fits uh, quite well already, and I think that's why I'm here. Yeah, I'm just, again, I'm looking forward to it. There's a lot of healthy competition, and... Um, I can learn a lot from, from each player. So we have defenders have been here for a very long time. Uh, PK is probably a legend, legend sta uh, status at the, at the club already. And, you know, I can learn a lot from him. Um, I can learn a lot from, from everyone here. So, yeah, I'm just, I'll am just i come in and do my best every day and, and try to learn. All right, Andreas Christensen, um, and of course, he referenced uh, Gerard Piquet has a lot to learn from the man. Let's go on a break now. When we return, we'll be back to wrap things up with what is going on in Rabat, Morocco, and also we spare a thought for Formula One. Join us again. All right, welcome back. Uh, let's uh, quickly go back to Rabat, Morocco. Let's see uh, what is happening, uh, whether or not the situation is uh, the same. Uh, I think right about now, there should be at um, half time. Uh, should be at half time. Let's just quickly uh, show to our viewers a situation report of uh, what's happening. And there you go. Um, it's live. Nigeria leading by a goal, uh, scored in the 20th minute. And... Um, we lead and South Africa taking full control of that group. They beat Burundi earlier, 3-1. 
All right. Uh, us saying, of course, we would love to have more goals in this game, but <laughs> all that matters is the win. Yeah, that's it. And, 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 I, and I could tell the way your voice dropped, you know, you're wondering why is this still 1 0? <laughs> and let me put some scare, you know, uh, some more. Just before halftime, uh, goalkeeper Chidoze Nadozi had to force two good saves because Botswana was saying, look, we don't want to go into the break uh, trailing. So they would have even leveled up. So it, it, it's clear that. Nobody's respecting anybody again with women's football in Africa, particularly when you meet the so-called big teams. You just want to prove a point. I think that's what Botswana seems to be doing. So the Super Falcons, they need to get back in, and then, uh, after the break, try and get quick goals, maybe score two and leave it at 3-0, then they can experiment whatever they want to experiment because if they keep that nervy approach that we saw before the end of first half, Botswana might just go on. And remember, if Botswana, Botswana should be hoping to get a draw in this one. And if they get a draw, puts them in second position with four points, and then we bring our calculators and start the match. We already have our calculators. We lost that first game. We already have our calculators. So, I mean, they shouldn't do that to us. Yeah, you talked about disrespect. I, 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 some comments from the Botswana camp earlier, I, you know, a lot of fans wanted to get angry. I'm like, no, it's it's football. I mean, they've seen, others, right. be, they've seen others beat you. When, you're up, when mm -hmm. your back is against the wall, you have nothing to lose. I mean, everybody expects yeah. Nigeria to beat Botswana. So they need to talk tough. Mm -hmm. And if they are able to pull it off, is it's news it's news mm -hmm. and both of us yeah. sitting here is one nil is a situation that we're not used to if it's That's Ghana right. Cameroon South yeah. Africa yes but for a team like Botswana at halftime we're leading one nil is a situation we are yet to come to terms with and so I mean for a lot of people who feel disrespected by some of the comments coming from the Botswana camp <laughs> win this game first and, and tell yeah. them not to disrespect you, but that will be after we win. Nobody should be mad because if you are from Botswana, if you watch the opening game between Nigeria and South Africa, and you see the opening game between Botswana and Burundi, you will be confident going to play Nigeria. You will say, look, they, 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 don't, they, don't, they didn't come into this competition prepared. Now, yeah. now that they've lost South Africa, their mindset is dented. So that was motivation for Botswana. So they needed to, to start talking. So the only way that the Super Falcons would have shut them up is if we're going into the break and they are 3-0 down. Even at 1-0, and what I gave a situation report just before halftime, Botswana will be believing that they can come back stronger. And as I said, I know they have a draw in their mind. And if they get a draw, you know the rest. Ugh. I don't even want to imagine. All right, let's 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 move on. Uh, also, let's talk about Formula One, uh, Max Verstappen. Yeah. I mean, I'll allow you to do the honors. Uh, I mean, we we'll talk about yeah. Max Verstappen so many times. Mm. Now he has a title under his belt. Uh, Mercedes are currently self-destructing. I mean, so... I know. So it's, and he's saying, look, I'm coming for my home Grand Prix. I want to win. That's right. And he has every right to say that because he did so well at, at, at the um, at the Canadian Grand Prix. It was it was on the podium, but whatever happened at the Great British Grand Prix happened, but he's still on top of the table with, with 181 points already. So look, Max has all the momentum going for him and he doesn't care. So getting ready for the next Grand Prix, ah, as we used to say on the street, he has mouth, you know, to talk. And and sometimes you need to say those things to, to boost your confidence. So I love what Max, Max Verstappen is doing, you know. Um, he loves he loves it at, at the Australian GP and he's chasing his fourth uh, win there. And that's enough to motivate him. I mean, that's what we're talking about, success pushes you to want to keep winning. Lewis Hamilton, that was um, that was his major rival, struggling to even win a race this season. That's that's Formula 1 for you. Let's listen to Max, you know, and then when we come back, uh, we're just going to wrap up with more Formula 1. Uh, okay. Uh, we, we might not be able to take that um, uh, insert. Uh, it it, Sorry, it does appear. Sorry, Max. We, we, we wouldn't be able to do that. But we, we'll listen to Max uh, some other time. Uh, talk about this. I mean, he has to deal with a lot of rivals now. Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz, those guys are uh, mm -hmm. giving him a what good a season for Carlos Sainz. Yes. What a yeah. season. Yes. I yes. love so, it. 
We'll see what happens. All right, Austin, before uh, we go, uh, let, let's do another check. Let's go back to Rabat. Another check before we go, because uh, I think it's time up right about now. But, but let, let's see. Uh, uh, the last time we checked, um, that's what you have on your screen. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, see, nothing has changed. Uh, I guess maybe they're still uh, at half time. So uh, hopefully Nigeria gets to win this. Hopefully we get to win this. All right, uh, that's the much we can take today on the show. Uh, we do hope that you enjoyed everything we've been able to bring to you. Still one more edition uh, for, of the show uh, for the week, and that will be tomorrow. Until then, uh, we ask you to enjoy the rest of the day. From the city of Lagos, right here in Nigeria, I'm Yemi Adebayo saying bye-bye now. Let's keep the conversation going on Twitter, channels underscore sports. That's the show in London. I'm Austin Okonapan. In everything you do, remember, let's keep talking sports. Bye for now.